STL Sproutcast. Welcome to STL Sproutcast, a podcast that takes you behind the scenes with people who produce engaging, enriching, educational, and fun St. Louis area activities and events. I'm St. Louis Sprout and About publisher Becky Maislin. And I'm managing editor Kathy Dieters. Listeners, get ready to unwrap a very special holiday episode of STL Sproutcast. Today, we're talking with two popular St. Louis destinations about their plans for the season. You'll hear from the National Museum of Transportation about the return of a beloved holiday train display and the arrival of a very special North Pole VIP. We'll also be talking with the Missouri Botanical Garden about the popular Garden Glow experience, Hanukkah and Kwanzaa events, and more. Our first guest today is Jessica Hood, Chief of Magic and Merriment, also known as Manager of Guest Experiences, for the National Museum of Transportation. Hi, Jessica. Thanks for joining us today. Hi, thanks so much for having me. What is it that makes trains so magical during the holiday season? What is it that doesn't make trains magical for the holiday season? Um, We celebrate the holidays um, really big, and it's all of the usual favorites that we've got here at the museum. Plus, we kick it up a notch with Santa and the reindeer and some extra trains. Um, A lot of extra fun for the holidays. The National Museum of Transportation has a special holiday train display each year. Tell us about the history behind the display. We do. So we have a couple of really large displays um, that we put up for the holidays every year. They look a little bit different every year. They kind of add some fun changes to it each year, um, which is fun for the kids that visit every year to kind of check out um, what's new and exciting this year and what's been changed since last year. So we have one that is um, created to look like the Macy's Famous and Bar downtown window display. So that came from there. So we have that set up that you can see that here just like you would um, back then downtown. So that's really neat. Um, A lot of people remember going downtown to see it back when it was in the window display. So that's really exciting. And then the other one is, um, it's our E. Desmond Lee display. It has been up for 10, 20 years, I think now. So it's evolved a little bit, but it, again, it's still got the same fun aspects each year and they add to it. And it's another one that people really enjoy seeing year after year. They come and see the different changes that we make. Are the trains running all the time during regular operating hours? They're not quite ready yet. They are still working on the finishing touches, but um, through the holiday season, they know that our big kickoff date is the 24th. So they'll be up and ready to go for that. It's become a bit of tradition for Santa to drop in at the National Museum of Transportation every November. How will he be arriving at the museum this year? Well, Santa uses a variety of different transportation modes, as we know. So um, first and foremost, the reindeer, but they will make us um, a few stops here. So they will be here four different days visiting. um, And then we let them off the hook and Santa comes in on a helicopter on November 25th. So that's always a big day. Um, He'll land via helicopter. And then we have him, actually our friends at Byerly RV this year provided a motorhome to have our Santa visits in. So we've got him set up in um, a really nice 2024 motorhome that uh, will have our visits and you can sit with, sometimes Mrs. Claus comes too and Santa brings a a little toy to give out to everybody. And it's, um, we hit a bunch of different modes of transportation. (laughs) That's great. Well, so what are the best times to see him at the museum throughout the holiday season? So he'll be here, um, I believe. So it's about seven different times. Um, And so you can check out our website for the kind of final details. But um, that first weekend is the 24th, 25th, and 26th. So he'll be here Friday, Saturday, Sunday from 11 to 2. And then the following Saturday, the Saturday after that, and the other Saturday. So quite a few times to take your pick. Any chance we might spot his reindeer there as well? Of course. They will be here that um, first November 24th and then three Saturdays after that. What else should families plan to do during their visit to the museum this holiday season? 
Well, we've got Fred Bird will be making a visit and Louie from the Blues, he'll be making a stop by. Um, we have all the usual trains you can climb in. Um, you can, of course, ride the miniature train and the trolley when those are operating, assuming that the weather stays nice. <laughs> we have the Major Libera Creation Station Playroom and then all of the usual favorites. So you can go and climb in the train cars and take a tour, all of the everyday things as well. Any tips for great presents to pick up at the museum's gift shop? Ooh, yes. Um, so we have a couple of really nice sales going on right now. Um, so our Black Friday and Cyber Monday deals are live. So that's um, a gift card for a little bit cheaper than normal. We have a family fun pack coupon, a gift membership. So that'll go for a whole year. That's a great deal. And then, yes, we have some very cute items that are holiday themed in our gift shop as well right now. What about for the maybe grown-up rail enthusiast in your life? Any gift ideas or special experiences that you're offering this holiday season? Yes, we do have an auction running right now for um, the next couple of days. So there's a um, chance for breakfast in the big boy. You can drive one of our trolleys. Um, there's a whole variety of things. We kind of, from the kids to the train enthusiasts, we've got something for everybody on that. Anything else you'd like to share today? I don't think so. We're excited. We're looking forward to it, and we hope everybody can stop by. We'll be right back after this brief message. Get ready to unwrap the fun. You'll find everything you need to plan some fun and merriment with your little elves in the St. Louis Spratton About Guide to Holiday Fun. Get details on Santa sightings, holiday shows, tree farms, light displays, winter break camps, and other holiday events in our handy resource guide. Visit stlsprout.com and click on Holiday Fun to start planning your holiday hijinks. With the return of Garden Glow, the Holiday Flower and Train Show, and the Garden's Hanukkah and Kwanzaa celebrations, the Missouri Botanical Garden is the place to be for family fun this holiday season. Our second guest today is Katherine Martin, Senior Information Specialist with the Missouri Botanical Garden. Hi, Catherine. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks so much for having me. Now, people might think of the Missouri Botanical Garden as a warm weather destination, but with so many holiday events, the garden has really established itself as a winter destination, too. The first one that comes to mind, of course, is Garden Glow. Can you tell us a little about this year's holiday light experience? Certainly. Uh, so Garden Glow is a wonderful, immersive walk-through light experience with more than two million lights throughout the garden. So the, the garden really does shine during Garden Glow and there are installations and it's all very interactive. There's a lot of photo opportunities. It's the perfect place to get a picture for your holiday card, um, food and festive drinks throughout. And it's really for everyone. There's something for everyone to enjoy at Garden Glow all ages. What's the process for getting everything installed for Garden Glow? Uh, believe it or not, it starts in August. Uh, we have a small team that sets up Garden Glow. Uh, it starts with just three people. So they start putting out uh, the beginnings of Garden Glow in August. And then around October, we ramp up the installation process. We add a few more hands to help out with that, that process. And then we're all ready to go by the opening. What types of displays will we see this year? Yeah, so there will be um, some of the, the favorites, um, like Big Blue has been here since the start. That's that sweet gum tree that's wrapped in 800 strands of blue lights. Um, the show in the central axis was updated last year, and that's the area that's uh, right in front of the Climatron. Um, so those pools are filled with lights. There's 12 and 24 foot Christmas trees, and it all uh, coordinates with music. And we have a couple of new features this year. I am most excited about our new snow machine. Uh, so as you exit the Ottoman Garden, uh, it will snow. No matter the weather, you will have a snowy night at Garden Glow every night. How neat. What are the dates for this year's Garden Glow? Garden Glow opens November 18th and is open through January 6th. Should visitors purchase tickets to Garden Glow in advance? We do always encourage uh, visitors to get their tickets in advance just to make sure you're getting that, that date and time that you want. Um, the tickets are timed, and as we get closer to the holidays, those we expect to sell out. So I would recommend getting your tickets in advance. Any tips for visiting Garden Glow with children? Yes, uh, I, I have a few. So first is uh, to not forget we have family nights. So Wednesdays through December 13th, kids' tickets are just $5 on our family nights. 
And if you have kids that are up for it, I would say go a little later in the evening, even if you can just get there at, at six o'clock. Five o'clock is the busiest time to get to Garden Glow. So if you want a little smaller crowd, try to get there at six or even seven if your kids can stay up late. Um, I would also say uh, if, to avoid the crowds, I would go on a weeknight if you can, especially those Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays earlier in the season tend to be a little less crowded. And um, another one that I think is great is to not forget you can go after the holidays. So we are open through January 6th. And I know everyone has so much on their calendar to, that they're trying to get in before before Christmas Day. And we have many nights of glow after Christmas. So if you don't get it in before the holidays, don't forget to come after. What kind of concessions will you have available this year? So Glow offers a lot of great food and beverage options. So our Sassafras restaurant is open for seated dining um, from 6 to 8 p.m. nightly. So if you want to get a full dinner before you walk into Garden Glow, uh, you can do that. And you can actually book a dining package in advance, which kind of is a nice peace of mind for families trying to make sure they've got everything set for Garden Glow. And so those dining packages are $18 for an adult. Uh, nine per child, and it includes an entree and a fountain beverage. And then if you're just looking for some fun, festive food and drinks throughout Garden Glow, we'll have hot chocolate, of course, um, and s'mores. We have a new partner this year, uh, S'more Shack. I don't know if you're familiar, but they offer elevated s'mores. So they're homemade and there's lots of different flavors, peanut butter, caramel, strawberry. So they have some delicious treats. And then uh, we, we also have s'more packages that you can make your own s'mores around the fire pits that we have and have some cocoa. And for the grownups in your party, we have some uh, fun hot chocolate as well. I've heard a rumor that Santa Frank might be stopping by the garden this holiday season. What's the best time to catch him there? Yes, Santa will be making a few visits to the garden this year. So at Garden Glow, uh, you can see Santa on Monday and Tuesday evenings. Uh, from November 20th through December 12th. Um, and Santa is also making a special stop at the garden during the day on December 2nd. Um, so this is an event for garden members and there's cookies, cocoa, festive music uh, from 1030 to 1 p.m. Uh, on December 2nd. And you can get your photo with Santa. And if you aren't a garden member yet, it's a great time to, to sign up um, and you can enjoy that holiday event. So, Catherine, the Holiday Flower and Train Show returns this year. What will visitors see at this year's show? Yes. Um, so we are very excited to have our, our full Holiday Flower and Train Show this year. So we will have hundreds of vibrant poinsettias in the Emerson Conservatory, along with uh, miniature displays and G-scale trains and trolleys that will be traveling through the, the displays. This is the first year the trains have been on display since 2019. Is that right? Yes, that is correct. We did have our holiday flower show last year for the first time since 2019. Uh, and that show happened just after the opening of our beautiful new Jack C. Taylor Visitor Center. Um, so the Emerson Conservatory where that show is had just opened and it wasn't quite ready uh, for the trains yet. But now we are up and running and I saw the trains and they, they are fantastic. I think everyone will have a wonderful time in that display. Oh, yeah. I know everyone's excited to uh, see that again. Yes, definitely. When can we view the Holiday Flower and Train Show? And the Holiday Flower and Train Show is open during normal garden hours, uh, and it's included with garden admission. And it's also open during Garden Glow and included with your ticket to glow. And it is open through January 1st. Is there a, there's a theme for that show this year, isn't there? Yes, uh, it is a Victorian theme. And that, that kind of goes hand in hand with the, the garden's history, of course. Uh, garden opened in 1859, so it, it'll be a, a wonderful uh, show. And it's focused on the, the fern craze and the Victorian era. So there's uh, lots of ferns and beautiful plants. The garden also hosts Hanukkah and Kwanzaa celebrations. Tell us a little more about those events. Sure. So our Hanukkah Festival of Lights event is on December 10th. So from noon to 3.30 that day, we'll have live music, dancing, a menorah lighting ceremony, and that's all taking place in the Gardens Bayer Event Center and is included with garden admission. And then from 4.30 to 8.30, we will continue to offer Hanukkah uh, children's activities for those who are visiting Garden Glow that evening. And we'll also have live music in the visitor center from 5 to 7 p.m. that night as part of our Hanukkah 
uh, celebration that will carry over into Garden Glow. And then for Kwanzaa, we have our Kwanzaa Festival of the First Fruits, and that is on December 27th from noon to 4 p.m. And that includes storytelling, crafts, jewelry displays, uh, authentic African drumming and musical performances, um, all just celebrating this contemporary African-American holiday. The Missouri Botanical Garden will also be celebrating a special birthday this year, Emily Dickinson. Why is the poet important to the garden? Yes, so we actually currently have a fabulous art installation in one of the galleries of the Stephen in Peter Sachs Museum that's focused on Emily Dickinson. Um, So Emily Dickinson actually had a personal herbarium scrapbook where she kept dried specimens of plants. She started that when she was 14 years old, and it ended up ultimately including about 400 specimens of pressed plants. Um, So now, you know, 200 years later, those plants are too delicate to view, but there are two artists who drew inspiration from that uh, herbarium that Emily Dickinson kept. And they gathered plants and flowers that were the same varieties that she had and created artworks inspired by that color palette um, for this installation called This Earthen Door is the name of the exhibit. And that is on display through March 31st in the Sachs Museum. When is that uh, celebration? And the celebration is on December 10th. That is uh, Emily Dickinson's birthday. And so that day, um, in addition to being able to view the exhibit, uh, we will have an actor uh, who will uh, bring to life Emily Dickinson's poems and her personal letters uh, embodying uh, this 19th century icon. And so she will be doing two performances, uh, one at 11 a.m. and one at 1 p.m. And that's included with general admission to the garden that day. Anything else you'd like to share today? Yeah. So I did want to remind everyone, uh, membership is a wonderful holiday gift uh, for your loved ones. So a garden membership includes entrance year round to the garden, as well as the Butterfly House out in Chesterfield and Shaw Nature Reserve in Gray Summit. And I did just also want to remind people that those uh, places are wonderful places to visit during the holiday as well. Uh, The Butterfly House in Chesterfield is having their Winter Jewels celebration, and that's November 24th through December 31st. Um, And you can enjoy the Tropical Conservatory that's filled with elaborate fairy gardens and beautiful jewel-toned butterflies. And Shaw Nature Reserve um, is just a wonderful place to have a peaceful walk in the winter and spend some quiet time. And so your membership includes admission to all three of those sites, as well as um, if you're a festival level member, then you you will get tickets to events like Garden Glow, as well as Orchid Show, Japanese Festival, all of those favorites. Okay, one last question for you. Once the lights are down, the trains have rolled out, and Santa's returned to the North Pole. What makes the Missouri Botanical Garden a great place to visit on a quiet winter day? The garden is actually a wonderful place to visit during the winter. Um, if you're looking to get away from the cold and you want to warm up, the Climatron's always 85 degrees, so where else can you take a tropical vacation in St. Louis in the winter? Um, so that's a wonderful place to see the tropical plants and just get a little warm and toasty. And we also have um, some lovely indoor facilities as well, um, like the Sachs Museum, um, where we have that Emily Dickinson display, as well as Urban Garden Dreams, which is a collection of student artwork. Um, And then the Emerson Conservatory, which hosts the Holiday Flower and Train Show, will reopen uh, with our annual Orchid Show in January, uh, on January 28th. So that's another wonderful winter activity. And if we get a dusting of snow, uh, the garden really is a magical place to visit. You can take a peaceful walk through the Japanese garden or visit the Victorian district, which I think in the snow reminds me a little bit of Narnia. So it's a, a fun escape. And also, um, I mentioned before, our other two sites. So uh, those are also great winter places to visit. Uh, The Butterfly House is closed in January, but it will reopen January 31st with Morpho Mardi Gras. So that's another beautiful tropical escape, and they will flood their tropical conservatory with a sea of blue Morpho butterflies. Uh, So that's definitely something to check out. And Shaw Nature Reserve has 17 miles of trails to hike. um, So that's a lovely place to spend a peaceful, quiet winter day. And they actually have classes um, specifically focused on winter hikes. So there's some unique opportunities out there. A big thanks to Jessica Hood and Catherine Martin for stopping by today. To learn more about holiday activities at the National Museum of Transportation, visit TNMOT.org. 
For more information about upcoming holiday events at the Missouri Botanical Garden, visit MissouriBotanicalGarden.org. For more happening holiday events in the St. Louis Metro, including holiday light displays, Santa sightings, Christmas tree farms, holiday stage shows, and more, visit our holiday fun guide at stlsprout.com. If you have questions about today's podcast or suggestions for future STL Sproutcasts, visit stlsprout.com and click the podcast menu tab to send us a message. You can also visit us on Facebook or Instagram at STL Sproutcast. If you liked what you heard today, be sure to leave us a review wherever you get your podcasts and share STL Sproutcast with your friends and family. As always, for more fun things to do with your family in the St. Louis area, visit stlsprout.com where you'll find the latest of news and events from your favorite destinations. While you're there, be sure to subscribe to our free e-newsletters. Sprout out! <laughs>